What is going on guys? We have an exciting video as you can see from the thumbnail the block is here and We got a lot of exciting stuff. So I'll let Jordan fill you in on that. What's up everybody? It's Jordan from Modular Head Shop. Uh, today we're gonna go over basic block prep after all the machine works done and Then we're gonna get into block assembly uh, The first thing that I'm gonna do is the last portion of machine work and that is Drilling and tapping the front of the block for the nine millimeter pins we got from the Yeah. To go with the Shelby mic billet chain guides. We're yes, sitting in the sir. assembly room right now. So I'm gonna do this simple operation real quick. I'm gonna prep the block, get it on a stand, do a final hand wash, and then we'll be putting the short block together this afternoon. Heck yeah. Now comment down below, rocking the uh, the Mohawk. I am it's awesome. And if anyone forgot, uh, we have a sleeved 5.8 block. Yep. Ready to go and make some power. Can't wait. Hope it goes together smooth. It should. <laughs> this is my seat and guide machine. It's just kind of a glorified drill press. The back of the uh, block is completely parallel to this, so that's why I'm using it. Big drill press. All right, so we got the first hole drilled. The next thing we need to do is chamfer the edge of the hole. And that is because there's a radius on here. So if you don't have a chamfer, it's not going to sit flush. That's what we're doing right now. A little peck. Now I have a nice chamfer. Now we're going to Scoot it over, do the other hole, we'll be ready to go. And there we go. Oh yeah. So that's the upgraded eight millimeter pin? The thread is eight millimeter. So people kind of get confused. They're like, oh, eight or nine millimeter. The thread's always eight by one, two, five. The outer portion is either eight or nine. So these are nine. All right, so we got the uh, pivot pin uh, holes drilled and tapped. Everything's good there. Next is uh, we're gonna prep the block. So that just entails cleaning all these machine surfaces. We're gonna clean all the threads for pretty much everything. Uh, head bolt holes, main stud uh, holes, bell housing holes. We already fixed one little issue here. This one was a little pulled out. I can't remember what that was from. I, think I don't you know. Said. Yeah. I, I remember when I took it apart. So the car actually had like a warranty work on the transmission at one point. So it could have been, you know, taking it out twice. They might have railed it in when they put, yeah. you know, the transmission back in. And yeah. There was just one that, that wasn't awesome, so Harley went ahead and put a Huey coil in it there. But other than that, everything's good, so we're just going to clean it, make sure all the bolts going good, and uh, prep the surfaces, final hand wash, short block assembly. All right, so I'm going to prep the bell housing area first, and then we're going to put it on an engine stand. That way we can roll it over, and we will prep the rest of it. Set my drill to about four. That'll let it not... If the bottom's out, it won't hurt the tap. This one has a Healy coil, so we're not going to do that one.
boy on here. Time to lift? Time to lift. Here we go. Uno, dos, tres. <laughs> So a couple things here, oil pan rail. It's already been somewhat prepped. I'm gonna prep it a little bit more, make it look pretty. Gonna deburr the edges here. I'm gonna deburr the edges on the mains all the way around. And uh, a few little other things. So the last thing I do before I uh, do a final hand wash before assembly is deburr the oil pan rail and deburr the cylinder head deck and some parts on the timing cover. Alright, so this is not on every single block. Some of the three valves are kind of bad, but this one, the machine works pretty good. It's just not done as good as it could be. Right here, the oil, oil pump entrance. There's quite a debacle going on. It just looks like they had a, you know, shallow point drill bit come in there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna port this and smooth More it out for oil. better flow. Yes, sir. Yep. We like oil pressure. We do. It's looking pretty good. Oh yeah. We didn't enlarge the hole at all, we're literally just trying to smooth that transition right there. All right, so last step is going to be polishing the crankshaft. We pretty much do this after we balance any assembly. So if you order an assembly from us, it's gonna get polished before it goes out. So this crank's in really good condition. We are literally just gonna put a final finish on it. So I got a wore out 320 grit here, and then I'm gonna go with a micro finish belt for my final. This right here will simply just clean the belt. I'm gonna contaminate. We're not looking to remove any material. We're gonna hit it nice and soft and uh, just take off any peaks and put a good f finish on it. Alright, 
so the crank is fairly clean, but we want to make sure it's perfectly clean. So we're really concentrating on any dust that got uh, thrown up when we were polishing the crank, being in the oil holes. So that's where I'm pretty much concentrating on. Um, other than that, after the crank was balanced, it did get a good wash all in. All right, everybody, we're here in the assembly room now. Pretty much gonna get the table ready for uh, blueprinting. And so I'm pretty particular in how I do that. It's all for a reason, so there's no confusion. and You can just go nice and smooth through assembly. So we'll start with the pistons. We're gonna do passenger side, one, two, three, four first, and then the driver's side, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing with the rods. Then we're gonna put some dye on them, label them. The rods are gonna get marked on both the top and the bottom because I'm going to separate them and then I'm going to go wash them one more time just because they get washed after balancing and some of the mineral spirits will pull away the assembly lube and I don't really care for this assembly lube. We're going to be using this for rod bowl lube today. Lube is ex extreme pressure synthetic grease. I prefer that for, uh, for rod bowl lube. Go get it sorted and then uh, very particular how I orient stuff but somewhere later throughout the video I will explain that in further detail. Okay, we got everything laid out. Wrist pins, wrist pin locks, pistons. We have our pistons oriented, so passenger side, one, two, three, four. Driver side, five, six, seven, eight. Now, for those of you at home that might find this a little bit confusing, the driver's side is the left side. It is from sitting behind the engine. So don't get confused. If you need to ever order a set of replacement pistons, it doesn't matter if it's Manly, Weissco, JE, Diamond, Ross. Um, if they are orientation specific, then they typically will have an offset wrist pin and that's what the F here is for. for so you have the wrist pin offset in the correct location or in the correct direction. So just keep in mind, if it's on the driver's side, it is the left side. If it's on the passenger side, it's the right. But Ford labels one through four on the passenger side. So that's why we have it set up like this. Now, when I, I'm gonna mark the rods, top and bottom, so we don't get confused once we separate them and I go wash them. Pistons are a little bit different. We're gonna flip all the pistons over so we can number them. The front for the right hand side is going to face to the left. I, I will explain this madness later. This side, the front's gonna face to the right. I'm gonna grab some dye here. We're just gonna mark them so we can etch a number on them. Now this one, we're gonna put on the bottom right. This will all make sense eventually. And the reason I do it this way is so there's no confusion it actually helps me orient the piston on the rod when I'm putting the piston on the rod because once the piston's on the rod, you don't want to have it backwards. Anybody that does this for a living has done it, I'm sure, plenty of times, and it's a pain in the butt. Got those. While that's drying, we're going to do these. Okay, so this is how I do it. Regardless of the logo, chamfer side, non-chamfered side, chamfered side up. When the chamfer side is up, your mark will be to the left. All right, now I'm just gonna separate the cap from the rod, pull the bolts out, give them a quick wash. We're gonna come back, throw some bearings in them, torque them to spec, and then that way they will be ready for blueprinting. been cleaned I've already pre the rod bolts with the Lucas oil stuff so one thing I want to mention I actually wrote an article about this it could be found on uh, our Facebook page our module headshot Facebook page yeah we'll drop a link right in the description below so we're using rod bearings from King they're the XPNs and the N is for narrowed 
Now, the cleavite also has their bearing that's narrowed. That's the CB1442HN. And so a narrowed bearing is made to clear the radius of the rod journal. Now, I think we spoke about this kind of in the uh, teardown. But the issue with these is, on a for a narrow bearing, you want the chamfer out towards the rod cheek, not towards the middle of the rod. That would be this, where it's going to touch the other rod. However, these bearings, the way that they're machined and the way this rod is machined, the lower needs to go on the upper portion here, and the upper needs to go on the cap side. And that is because, typically, the chamfer will be here, facing up, and the bearing tanks will be on the right-hand side. But they're on the left here. So, it's just good practice for me. I do a lot of aftermarket crankshaft builds. And so I'm not going to stop using the same method. So just for example, this is an upper. Put this in here. And you can see the gap here in the back. That's on the thrust side. So actually on the chamfered or the rod cheek side, it's hanging out too far. So the correct way would be to use the lower, and it's the same bearing shell, it just has the tang located differently. Now you can see there's more of a gap here and less of a gap back there. If you're using a, if you have a 4.6 and you're using a Manly or an Eagle crankshaft, uh, for sure you need to follow this method because if you don't, once you go torque the rod cap down, you're pretty much bottoming the edge of the bearing up on the radius and the motor will not turn over. <laughs> and if you start it like that, you're going to have a big problem. Uh oh. So, go ahead, we're going to put the bearings in and then uh, torque them up. I will be using the torque angle method on final assembly, however, I do not use that method when I'm blueprinting because it just adds time. So there's a number. That's very close. Also, if you see me tapping the rod here, that's just to make sure that it's seated all the way. A rubber mallet is not gonna hurt the rod. However, trying to draw the cap on with the bolt when it's not completely centered to the threads is not good. Have a good chance of hurting the rod bolt threads. So if you've noticed, I, uh, I have quite a little bit of uh, rod bolt lube under the head as well as the threads. Lube under the head is just as important as the threads. That is where all the friction is going to come from. Um, that is why we like to use the torque angle method just because it's more consistent, just because the amount of friction here. Um, but just note that that is very important. And if you're not doing it, you should be. So, we got all the rods torqued with the bearings in them, so that part is ready to blueprint. Next, we are going to install bearings here, the main studs, main caps, torque the spec, get that part ready for blueprinting. But first, I am going to block off the oil squirters. Um, these are different than uh, Coyote oil squirters. I'm sure people are more familiar with those. Um, this is nothing more than another hole drilled into the main saddle. And it just got a little pocket here aimed at the back of the piston so what we are going to do is actually just plug these 1 16th MPT and that way we get a little bit more oil pressure up where we need it because we're not wasting it all right now we're throwing the main studs in Move the threads a little bit. The GT500 aluminum block does not have two different sized main studs or main bolts. So we are using two two valve or four valve iron block main studs. All 
right, so I've got the washers installed. Let me put the main caps on. Now, one thing I want to note is, you see how I'm moving the uh, washer, the top of the washer, and the top portion of the threads of the head, or the main stud. You don't want to get any lube underneath the washer. The whole point of the washer is to let the nuts spin against a hard, flat surface. Um, do not put lube underneath the washer and then put the washer on. We do not want the washer to spin, only the nut. That goes for head studs as well. If your heads are oily, it's best to clean them so they're not so oily and the, the washer's not sitting on oil. All right, so all the main fasteners are torqued. All the rod bolts are torqued. So now we're going to blueprint. The first thing I'm going to blueprint is piston wall clearance. All right, I'll be using a Starrett micrometer. Reads to 1 10 thousandths resolution. And then a Sunnen dial bore gauge. I do not have a dial bore gauge uh, setting fixture. Some guys use ones probably for a more machine shop use, um, but for assembly I try to always encourage people to use the micrometer that you're measuring your parts with to set your dial bore gauge. That way there are no variables and you're going to get an accurate reading. Also, as you, uh, if you've seen our sonar head video, I keep all the sonar head loose prints on an Excel sheet. Same thing here. Um, customer name, date, what parts are going in it, and then we keep all the bearing clearances, piston wall clearance, in play, ring gap, all that kind of stuff stays on file. It also stays here though. I do not give those specs out, but uh, I do have them on file, so if anybody ever has an issue or wants to know anything down to the nitty gritty, it, it is all saved here. So, so we are running the Diamond uh, GT500 specific pistons, really nice piece. Uh, they do have the coated skirts. The coated skirts are going to, they add about eight tenths uh, total. So it's about four tenths thick. That can simply buff, buff off if uh, you need more piston to wall clearance. We uh, set this one up a little looser than we typically would with the plasma liner because that is gonna grow a lot more with the plasma liner. Now it has a, a much thicker sleeve. Uh, it will expand with heat but not as much as the plasma bore. 200 wall wrist pins from Trend, and then the, uh, the Molnar Power Adder Series connecting rods. Crankshaft journals, I'll start with the mains, I'll do all the mains, then I will tighten this up, do all the rods, record them, then we'll set the dial board, do the rods, measure the rods, then set it for the mains, measure the block. Beautiful. Alright, and spec. 2.6570. <laughs> All right, everybody. So, looks like we're not going to have a complete short block today. Main bearing clearance is a little bit loose for my liking. We're certainly not cutting any corners here. So, we're just going to overnight a set of bearings Monday. And we'll film that portion Tuesday. But we still have plenty of other stuff to do. Um, I have piston rings to file. And we'll get the pistons hung on the rods and everything this evening. Um, but this is why you blueprint. This right here is exactly why you blueprint. Instead of just slapping crap together, you don't know what the clearance is. This would have been a, not a big boo-boo. It would have lived for a long time, but less than adequate oil pressure for sure. 
and uh, so for that reason we are not going to touch this for the rest of the day we're just going to uh, you know do what I said <laughs> I'm going to file piston rings and uh, wait for the proper bearings to uh, get the correct clearances all right guys so I hope you enjoyed the video I just want to end it off right here we are going to continue the rest of the short block assembly tomorrow uh, so you guys will see that video there make sure you hit the like button down below leave a comment I'm so excited to get this car back going and I hope you guys are enjoying the video series so far we're just waiting on two parts to come in and then we should be good to go if you guys need any parts or anything else uh, mustanglifestyle.net we sell superchargers bc racing suspension all sorts of fun stuff over there let me know what you need it helps us out helps you out and all that good stuff if you guys want an engine quote from jordan modular head shop uh, you can go to their website you can call them or you can email modheadshop at gmail.com anyway guys leave a comment down below we are excited to get the gt500 back up and running we're waiting on two parts also check out shelby mike racing we have his uh timing chain tensioners uh as well so i'm gonna leave a link down in the description below we'll talk more about um some various different technical things a little bit later but anyways we're waiting for two parts it'll come back i can't wait to be ripping the gt500 again so we'll see you guys next time